Now, Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooten's Arkansas Football. Hello and welcome to Hooten's Arkansas Football tonight from the Marketplace Grill, a favorite place for football fans to eat in the fall before or after games on Fridays and Saturdays and their new fall menus out at Marketplace. We'll be telling you about some of the great new items on the menu at Marketplace Grill coming up here in just a few minutes. But tonight we have highlights from the final week of the regular season in high school football. And we will begin with highlights from Class 5A tonight, brought to you by Big Red Fina. The number one team in Class 5A is Springdale. The Bulldogs at Rogers Friday night, no problem. Springdale scored 38 points in the first half. Razorback recruit Mitch Mustaine passed for 124 yards and two touchdown passes in the first two quarters. And Matt Klingscale rushed for 75 yards and Springdale's three other first half touchdowns. It was 38 to zip at the half. Final score, Springdale 38, Rogers 0. At Fayetteville, the Purple Dogs lost their final two games last year. Friday night, Fayetteville looking for some payback for one of those losses against Bentonville. The Purple Dogs built a 14-10 halftime lead. Lester Clark ran for three Fayetteville touchdowns in the night. Bentonville, well, the Tigers won the state championship in 2001, but they haven't made the playoffs since. Final score, Fayetteville 36, Bentonville 10. At Sylvan Hills, the Bears trying to earn a share of the 5A East title playing host of Jonesboro. The Hurricane with no postseason chance, only an opportunity to play spoiler. And quarterback Carter Harbuck's touchdown pass to B.J. Carter put the Hurricane up early. But Sylvan Hills would come right back. Camming Kareem, we've been calling his name for three years on this show. And Camming's got the touchdown, and Sylvan Hills has got a share of the East title. Final score, Sylvan Hills 27, Jonesboro 17. At Cabot Thursday night, the playoff bound Panthers playing host of Jacksonville. And Look at Jackson Bulls to Rod Hatcher. Getting loose on the first play of Jacksonville's second possession. He's gone. To Rod Hatcher. 77 yards. The Red Devils would go for two. And quarterback Daniel Hubbard passes to Justin Aikens. Jacksonville was up 8 to nothing, And the Red Devils go on to earn themselves a playoff trip. Visiting Bryant in the first round next Friday. Final score, Jacksonville 22, Cabot 7. The 5A South Benton Panthers finished the regular season against 1-8 Watson Chapel Thursday night at Benton. The Panthers found a bit of a running game for the first time this season. Junior Donovan Clark's 18-yard run up the middle put Benton up 7-0 in the first quarter. Then the Panthers would explode for three scores in the second quarter. Josh Langley hit Sam South with a 27-yard strike in the back of the end zone. And moments later, Bryson West will block a punt and Chris Schwinn will recover in the end zone to put Benton up 21-0 on defense. Benton's Zach Teeter had three interceptions all in the first half, and Benton rolls to the playoffs. Final score, Panthers 41, Watson Chapel 8. The number two ranked Little Rock Central Tigers hammered hapless all in the annual Bell Bowl Thursday night at Quigley Stadium. Central's Mickey Dean dominated 147 yards rushing, and quarterback Clark Irwin ran for a couple of touchdowns. Next Friday, Central will begin defense of its state title against Fayetteville at Quigley. Final score, Tigers 43, Little Rock Hall 0. At North Little Rock Thursday night, the Charging Wildcats playing host to the Bryant Hornets. Both teams needing a win to avoid a trip to Springdale. The Hornets' hot hand was junior quarterback Anthony Mass. He has passed for more than 2,000 yards this year, 274 yards on Thursday night, including this touchdown toss to Richie Wood. Bryant was up 35 to 15 in the third quarter before North Little Rock rallied. Charging Wildcat quarterback Josh Dixon passed for 323 yards. This touchdown toss cut Bryant's lead to six points with eight and a half minutes left. But Bryant was able to run out the clock using its ground game. Brandon Button were doing most of the work, and the Hornets are co-conference champ. Final score: Bryant 40. Two, North Little Rock, 29. All right, well, our goal is just to make the playoffs. And uh, once we lost to Catholic, you know, we beat Central. We know we, we had a shot. We should have bring our A game every night, and so we did. We've been ahead in every single game we played, and, and it's, you know, it's tough to lose. Nobody nobody has come in and, 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 and just killed us, and we've competed well. We lost Sylvan Hills. You know, we were heading the fourth quarter. Uh, Catholic, Central were ahead at halftime, and this game came down the wire. So the kids have been fighting, fighting, fighting. 
As we head to the playoffs, Springdale is the number one team. Little Rock Central's number two, but the Tiger D is not nearly as tough as last year. West Memphis is number three. The Blue Devils have won six in a row, and November is traditionally their month. Bryant was 11-0 back in 1999 when it lost to Northside in the second round. Those two are set up for another showdown in Saline County in two weeks. Fayetteville is headed for Little Rock Central. Sylvan Hills will have home field advantage throughout the playoffs, but won't make it to War Memorial Stadium. If the Bears win in the first two rounds, they'll probably play host to Springdale in the semis. Russellville and West Memphis have something in common. They're the only two teams in Class 5A that have won at least one playoff game each of the past four seasons. Benton starts a second 10. The Panthers haven't won a playoff game in more than a decade, and they'll have their hands full with Russellville in the first round. Cabot has a winnable game at Texarkana next week. Little Rock Catholic has a tough draw at West Memphis. Camden Fairview moves up to number 14 this week, but Southside's season is over with just three wins. The Rebels started the year with a tie at El Dorado. Van Buren is the best team to not make the playoffs this year. Lake Hamilton, the Wolves are followed by Jacksonville, Rogers, Jonesboro, Mountain Home, Conway, Pine Bluff, and Searcy. Coming up next, more of Hootons Arkansas football class 4A highlights are next. Overlock Oak Grove battling Monticello for the Southeast title and a top playoff seed. Monticello didn't take him long to hit stride. Michael Green returned the opening kickoff. He's a transfer from Warren. He goes 95 yards. Monticello was up 7 0. Lots of momentum on the Billy side now. Next possession, junior Michael Rimley puts the Billies up 14 0. But Oak Grove would score the next two touchdowns and actually led this game 15 14 in the third quarter before Monticello would turn it into a track meet and run away with the league title. Final score, Monticello 28, Oak Grove 21. Magnolia made the trip to Little Rock Fair looking for its third playoff berth in four years. Fair was up eight to six in the second quarter when Fair quarterback Brandon Moore just throws it up and Magnolia's got the interception. They go to work with sophomore Vincent Baker picking up the first down. That would set up a short Magnolia touchdown and the Panthers lock up the number three playoff seed. Final score, Magnolia 26, Fair 16. First service Bank presents the Faulkner County Judges Cup annually to the winner of Bologna and Greenbrier. Bologna would strike first Thursday night. Jake Gottschalk follows a wall of Bologna blockers. Ten yards for the touchdown. That put Bologna up six to nothing. Greenbrier would answer. Junior quarterback Nick Maxfield rolls out, fires the senior Josh Camden, and that would set up this 35-yard field goal by a sophomore. It's Garrett Nelson kicking it through the uprights. That put Greenbrier on the board, but Bologna was just too strong up front, pounding away all all night on Greenbrier. Bologna totaled more than 400 yards rushing. Josh McIntyre gets a big chunk of it here. McIntyre's run would set up Nick Calger's touchdown keeper. That made it 12 to three Bologna. Kyle Salmon led Bologna with 146 yards rushing on the night. He would score the two point conversion here. Next week, Putin's Arkansas football TV cameras will follow Bologna to win for the first round of the playoffs. Final score from Thursday night, Bologna 45, Greenbrier 21. In Northwest Arkansas, Silo Springs returned home Friday night after back-to-back -back heartbreaking losses to Alma and Greenwood. Huntsville would help Silo feel super again. Larry Sellers takes the handoff on Silo's first play and he's gone. 64 yards for the touchdown. Sellers carried eight times for 108 yards and the Panthers are headed for defending state champion Batesville in the first round. Final score, Silo Springs 45, Huntsville 0. As we head to the playoffs, Alma's ranked number one. The Airedales have finished the regular season unbeaten twice in the past three years. Robinson's also 10-0. The Senators will play host to West Helena next week. Wynn is number three with the big showdown against Bologna in the first round. Greenwood drops to number four after losing to Alma on Friday night. And the defending state champion Batesville Pioneers have a tough playoff draw next week against Siloam Springs. There's Bologna and Monticello. The new 4A Southeast champs have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Blydeville's number nine. The Chickasaws are in the playoffs for the first time since 98. Oak Grove starts the second 10. The Hornets have lost two in a row and will play host to Magnolia next week. The Hornets are followed by Hope, West Helena, Whitehall, and Marlton. The Devil Dogs finish the season with three straight wins and they will be tough next year. Paragould's number 16. The Rams are in the playoffs for the second year in a row. Paragould is followed by Magnolia, Fair, Crossit, and Marion. Number 21 is the Golden Goblins, then it's the Comets and Arkadelphia. The Badgers move into the top 25 after winning their final two games this season. They're just nine points away from being in the playoffs. Malvern is number 24. The Leopards won just three games this season, and Green County Tech rounds out the top 25. Now, the United States Marines Scholar Athlete of the Week. Whitehall honor student Josh Stringer 
is also one of the best field goal kickers in the state. Use the team will call timeout to try and make me nervous, so I just try and stay as calm as possible. And just, I mean, I've done it, everything in practice millions of times. I can do it game. It shouldn't be any different. Congratulations to Bulldogs Josh Stringer, the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Thanks a lot, Joe Pequeno, and congratulations to Josh Stringer from Whitehall, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Tonight from Marketplace Grill, it's Hooton's Arkansas Football. We're going to tell you about the fall menu items at Marketplace, one of our favorite places to eat before after games on Fridays and Saturdays. Coming up here in just a few minutes, but next we have highlights from Class 3A on Hooton's Arkansas Football. More of Hooton's Arkansas Football, brought to you by First Security Bank Corp. Give them something to talk about for the rest of the winter. Make them want to pack up those cars and vans and buses and whatever and travel and follow the Bulldogs the rest of this season. Start tonight with the best team in Nate AAA. A lot easier said than done. Star City coach Buck James and the Bulldogs playing host to the number one team from the 8 AAA dollar way. Star City fighting for the number three playoff seed and some tough build conditions Thursday night. Nonetheless, the Bulldogs were on the move. Junior Antonio Allen finding running room and Star City is in dollar way territory. And on fourth and long, Bulldog quarterback John Furneaux sprints out. He goes for it all, but dollar way's Matthew Price snatches it. Great play by Price at the two yard line. And here comes dollar way standout running back Cody Burns trying to drive the length of the field and Dollarway would do so. Burns from eight yards out right up the gut for a six to nothing Dollarway lead. Star City would answer and the Bulldogs were up by two at the half but Dollarway pulled away down the stretch. Final score Dollarway 19 Star City 8. The McGee Owls traveled to Fordyce Thursday night looking for their fifth win of the year and a possible playoff berth. Fordyce led only by seven at halftime, 29 to 22, but special teams breakdowns doomed McGee in the fourth quarter. The snap sails over the punter and through the end zone for a Fordyce safety. A little bit later, McGee would get the ball back, still trying to get back into this one, but the red bugs smell blood. And here comes Harvey Jimerson on the blitz. Ouch! That left a mark. Three plays later, the ball squirts free, and Brian Allen recovers for Fordyce to seal the victory. The Bugs are headed to the postseason. Final score, Fordyce 31, McGee 22. I know you're disappointed, but the last half of the season, guys, you played good football. Our defense played great the second half. They didn't give up any points. Uh, they even got two points. That gave us really the lead that ended the game. Central Arkansas Christian looking to bounce back from its first conference loss in almost two years on Friday playing host to Mayflower and the Mustangs not sharp early with the fumble in the first play of the game and Mayflower's Geo Joshua makes some play. Nifty touchdown run. Mayflower was up but CAC would respond. Jesse Gates with the big pump fake then he goes up top to Trent Morgan and that's Gates' 24th touchdown pass of the year. He's got 63 in his career. A little bit later after one of Mayflower's four turn Overs. Gates this time on the ground, and the Mustangs have earned three straight playoff bursts for the first time in school history. Final score, CAC 42, Mayflower 12. Pulaski Academy had already wrapped up the 6 AAA title, trying to avoid a letdown at Little Rock Christian, and no letdown here. A sophomore Stephen Lux is up top to Trevor Gillott. That's Lux's 31st touchdown pass of the year, and the 15th time he found Gillott for a score. PA wasn't finished. Lux hits another weapon. That's Aaron Langford with the reception inside the red zone that would set up another lunch to Gillette touchdown pass and Pulaski Academy blows out Christian final score Bruins 41 Little Rock Christian 6 from Little Rock to Southwest Arkansas now we'll wrap up our AAA coverage with the Fountain Lake Cobras against undefeated Nashville the 7 AAA championship on the line Nashville led 14 to 6 in the third quarter but here comes Fountain Lake quarterback Justin Bradbury hits Ozzy Overton for the 16 yard gain to the Nashville 13. The Cobras weren't conceding anything. Inject the venom, baby. On the next play, Overton runs hard and stretches for the goal line. He would score on the next play, and that left Nashville hanging on to a two point lead, 14 to 12. But the Scrappers would come up with a big play on the hill. Here's your play of the game. Facing third and 12 from the 37, Nashville Super Sophomore quarterback AJ Whitmore gets loose on the scramble. 36 yards. This kid is going to be something. He gets down to the one yard line. Whitmore would carry 18 times for 158 yards. 
Samuel Bellows would ice the game on the next play, and Nashville wins its first outright conference title in four years. Final score, Nashville 32, Fountain Lake 12. It's one of the greatest feelings I've ever had. I hope that we can get to the state championship game and win it too. We're appreciative, we're thankful, we're humbled by it. I'm extremely excited. I mean, to be able to come down here, and Ashdown's really controlled this league the last couple years. And for these kids to come out and play week in, week out, learn a new system, and then go through it, uh, you know, undefeated, I think speaks volumes of this program. Boonville is 10-0, but the Bearcats are on the tough side of the AAA playoff bracket. Pulaski Academy has home field advantage throughout the postseason and could meet Boonville in the semifinals. CAC plays host to Fordyce in the first round, but will likely be on the road for the rest of the playoffs. Nashville's win secured the Scrappers' home field advantage through the playoffs. Look for a big game between Nashville and either Ozark or Rivercrest in the second round. The Scrappers are followed by Atkins and Ashdown. Dollarway is the eight AAA champion. There's Warren and Harrisburg. Green Forest is undefeated, moving into the top 10. The Hillbillies start the second 10, followed by Rivercrest and Fountain Lake. The Cobras travel to Dardanelle in the first round. Then it's Pocahontas, Shallow Christian, and Lone Oak. The Jackrabbits are headed to Bradley County for a tough game against Warren in the first round. There's the Sand Lizards, Hoxie, and Osceola, which tied for second in the three AAA and could be in Little Rock to take on PA in the second round. Newport is headed to Shallow Christian. The Greyhounds are followed by Dover, Mariana, Mina, Fordyce, and Star City home of this week's Spirit Student of the Week. Now, the ConocoPhillips Spirit Student of the Week. Star City sophomore Emily Pearson was convinced about this time last year that she needed to be the Bulldog mascot in 2004. Last year around the last game of the season because one of my friends said I'm more outgoing than other people who are going to try out and I had a better attitude than most of them, and they wanted a Christian on the squad, and I would be the one. Emily, a Star City's mascot, involved in many extracurricular activities, maintains a 3.75 GPA, and has some well-defined goals. Well, I want to be an athletic director like Frank Rolls, but I want to start off at a high school level, and then I'm going to take his job. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by State Farm. We've been talking about it all week long. We've been talking about it all year long. We want to go 9 0. We want to go 9 0. We have a great opportunity right out there in about five minutes. A good Carlisle team is standing in our way. Arkansas Badgers coach Michael Carter and the Eagles looking to make it a clean sweep of the 4AA at Carlisle Friday night. The Bison missing the playoffs for the first time since Ronald Reagan was president. But playing tough, Carlisle Heath Hawkins finds junior Stanley Edwards to set up a Carlisle touchdown. It's Edwards up the middle and Carlisle's up 7-0. Arkansas Baptist would try to turn this one around. Senior quarterback Red Hatcher finding some room on the bootleg, but the drive would stall and Carlisle was just eating up bad this early. The Bison would score on their next possession too. Senior TJ Powell spins into the end zone and Carlisle denies Baptist a perfect conference record. Final score, Bison 26, Baptist 18. Two things I ask you every ball game. Play hard and have fun. Play hard and have fun and the school board's gonna take care of itself. Everybody ready? Yes sir! sir. Let's go. Coach Poole and his Bears were looking to pick off struggling Murfreesboro Friday night in the 7AA West. And senior free safety Matt Comer does just that on the second play of the game, setting up Spring Hill at the Murfreesboro 22. The Bears promptly go to the play action pass. Sophomore quarterback Blake Hill finds senior Michael Coffey for the touchdown. Spring Hill was up 7-0. Spring Hill would come right back, drive 46 yards for its second score. Hill rose to his right, time for another coffee break in the corner of the end zone. Spring Hill was up 13 to zip, but the Rattlers would respond. Murfreesboro's tough running, Jeremy Womack. The Rattlers are in the middle of a 10-play drive right here. Womack would cap the drive with a really nice block from his fullback, gets into the end zone, but Spring Hill rolls into the playoffs for the first time. Final score, Spring Hill 39, Murfreesboro 13. Hooton's Arkansas football number one team since early July has been rising and the Wildcats were looking to complete their third straight undefeated regular season Thursday night. Something to dance about at Rising. The Wildcats rolling out the hits on visiting Eudora. Rising was up 25 to nothing at halftime. Senior Wayne Wainwright, that's the way you support the run. The Sonic Super Teamer cuts down the running back for a big loss. A little bit later, Eudora quarterback Ricky Keith on the bootleg and he's swarmed under. Joe Cook, Terry Hopper, Clint Green and Robert Stevenson 
can't keep Keith down. The Badger quarterback goes deep to Contritius Drew. That would set up Eudora's only score of the night as Ryzen rolls. Final score, Wildcats 39, Eudora 6. Here's Hooten's Class 2A rankings brought to you by the Arkansas Army National Guard. Ryzen is not completely healthy, but it won't need to be for a couple of weeks in the playoffs. Charleston's the 1AA champion is on the opposite side of the playoff bracket for Ryzen. Palestine Wheatley is number three. The Patriots lost their season finale to a good Hughes team, but their top seed was already secured before kickoff Thursday night. Number six, Lavaca is likely headed to Palestine in the second round. Dirks should take out Danville before Harding Academy comes to town in the second round. Hughes' Johnny Payton ran for three touchdowns and kicked the game-winning field goal against Palestine Thursday night. Greenland starts a second 10. Pirates are followed by Bearden, Barton, Jessefield, and Ola. The Mustangs could have shared the five AAA title, but could not beat Magnet Cove Thursday night. Arkansas Baptist is the 4 AA chance, but they dropped two spots after losing at Carlisle. There's Gillette, Perryville, Mount Ida, and Hector. The Wildcats face arguably the best player in the 1 AA next week in Lavaca quarterback Jeff Powers. Hector is followed by the Horn. Hornets, Go Devils, Gators, Spring Hill, and Eudora. For the second time this season, we return to the Hill at Nashville for the State Farm Play of the Week. And for the second time, it's super sophomore quarterback A.J. Whitmore. Nashville was up by only two, facing third and long. The conference championship on the line, and Whitmore beats Fountain Lake with his legs. 36-yard scramble would set up the game-clinching touchdown, and that is our State Farm Play of the Week. Coming up in December at the State Farm Awards, we'll be naming the Play of the Year, as well as an offensive and defensive player of the year for all four classifications and a coach of the year for every classification. That's at the State Farm Awards, honoring Arkansas's top coaches and players presented by Hooten's Arkansas Football.